Before you begin, assemble all of your tools and unplug your time capsule, ideally for a day or two in advance. You will need a hair dryer and a razor blade, as well as a soldering iron, a screwdriver, electrical tape or heat resistant tape, nail clippers or wire snips, a plastic knife, a pair of needle nose pliers, not essential but helpful, and then the components in this kit. To remove the bottom of your time capsule, you first must remove a rubber base which is attached to a metal plate with heat sensitive adhesive. Under this rubber base are screws which hold the time capsule together. Use a hair dryer to heat the rubber base and loosen the adhesive. Once the rubber base has been heated for a moment, grip it in a corner near where the Ethernet and USB plugs are at the rear of the unit. Pull firmly and slowly upward as the adhesive loosens. Work slowly and carefully to avoid tearing the rubber until you have removed the entire rubber base. Once removed, place the rubber base in a safe location for reinstallation later. Now remove all screws from the rear of the unit. Be aware that one screw in one of the corners of the unit will be a post screw. You cannot remove this screw no matter how much you turn it, it is permanently attached. Now that all screws are removed, remove the metal base plate. Lift carefully and slowly, and be mindful that there is a cable connected to the unit up near the fan. Unplug this fan cable and remove the entire back of the unit. Now we're going to remove the hard drive from the unit. There are four cables connecting the power supply to the hard drive. Three of them need to be removed in order to remove the hard drive. Start by removing the clip that's in between the two cables connected to the hard drive. This has a lever connection that must be depressed and pulled firmly upward. Then, as you lift the hard drive out, be mindful of the heat sensor that is attached to the hard drive. This can be pried up. It's only attached by a small amount of adhesive. Set it aside for use later. Next, lift the hard drive completely upward and remove the two cables connecting it. One should be able to be pulled straight out while the other again has a lever connection that must be depressed first. Now remove the power supply unit. Remove the input plug on the outside of the case. This should just slide straight up and out. There should be no other cables now connected to the power supply unit. You should be able to just lift it straight up and out of your time capsule. Now remove the power supply from the foil and plastic casing. Start by peeling back the foil carefully until you can expose a seam in the plastic casing. With the plastic seam now exposed, use your fingers, your knife or razor knife to separate the adhesive from the seam. Be careful of the plastic, it may be brittle. As you're cutting with the razor blade, be careful not to touch any part of the blade to any portion of the circuit board. If any pieces of the plastic do break off, put them aside for reinstallation later.
Work patiently and slowly until you can get the seam open. Now that the plastic seam is open, be careful handling the circuit board. Handle it by its edges and do not touch any of the metal portions of it. Notice when you peel open the plastic casing, there is a small amount of adhesive in several different spots. This is where you're going to use your plastic knife to separate that adhesive. It should come apart with a little bit of prying. Again, work carefully and slowly, taking care not to touch any metal portions of the circuit board with your hand. Next, use a plastic knife to separate the back edge of the circuit board from the plastic casing. Now that you have the power supply free of the plastic casing, you need to discharge the capacitors which can store residual electricity so that you avoid giving yourself any sort of electrical shock. Use the resistor that came with the kit and wrap it in some electrical tape so that no parts of the wires will be touching your fingers. Bend the wires of the resistor so that they are about a quarter inch apart. Now you need to discharge the power supply. Ideally, you have left your time capsule unplugged for several days in advance to attempt to do this repair. Examine the circuit board. There are two large high voltage capacitors that resemble AAA batteries. These are the capacitors that you need to discharge. Use the resistor with bent wires, or if you have it, an electrical multi-tester with leads, and touch the two wires of resistor or your tester against the two wires leaving the end of the capacitors. Be careful not to touch any other metal parts. Hold in place for several seconds and then repeat with the second capacitor. Your board should now be discharged. Now that you've discharged the high voltage capacitors, you can safely handle the circuit board and examine the remaining capacitors that need replacement. There are four capacitors that are prone to failure on the Apple time capsule. All four of these capacitors are included in your kit. You may choose to replace all four at this time, or just the ones that have blown. To identify the blown capacitors, look carefully at their end caps. Blown capacitors will look like they're slightly burst at the seams and may have some sort of rusty material on them. 